how many of you guys have a Facebook business page? Okay, about actually a pretty good number of you guys, maybe about a third. And how many folks are there in the crowd that have advertised their business using Facebook before? So paid advertising. Okay, great. That's great, uh, great context. And let's get going. This is me. So I'm originally from, from the US. I moved to Singapore about a year ago. Originally in the US, I was working with Facebook in their headquarters. Moved to Singapore a year ago to help start the team here that's responsible for small and medium businesses, helping them get onto Facebook in some shape or form. I've got a cover photo up there. That's my daughter, Naomi. She's 16 months. When we first came over to Singapore, she was about four months or so. She's born in the US, so I don't think she yet knows that she's in Singapore. But as she gets older, it's probably, we're gonna have to break the news to her at, at some point that she isn't where she, she was born, but we'll take that as it comes. What else about me? Let's see. Work at Facebook, we already talked about that. I did a recent check-in, if you look at that map icon, I recently checked into our Korea office where I was meeting with some colleagues and also just came back from a trip in the US after two weeks. Pretty happy to be home where I got to see my family, but especially happy that I got to get home just in time to speak with you guys here. So again, thanks for, for having me. I'm, I'm thrilled just to be here today talking with all of you about small businesses. So let me tell you guys a story. About three years ago, does anyone know where this is? Pretty good, you guys can, you guys can read, right? Yeah. Buenos Aires, all right. So this was Argentina about three years ago. I was working for Google at the time, and I was taking a walk, and I came upon this sign. So we are in the town square of Buenos Aires. I see the sign. A couple of things stood out to me right away. The first thing is that this town square had a Facebook page. And you have to imagine that this was three years ago, and this was in Argentina. So up until this time, I had seen Facebook pages, but only for bigger brands, such as Procter & Gamble or Coca-Cola. I had never really seen a Facebook page for what I considered to be a pretty small business. That's the first thing that surprised me. The second thing that surprised me was that the town government, they put the URL of their Facebook page onto their permanent metal sign. So what stood out to me about this was that they didn't put their website URL on the sign. They didn't put a like us on Facebook sticker. No, this was part of their permanent sign and they probably knew better than I did. They were willing to bet the future of their online traffic on Facebook. So you have to imagine where I am. I'm sitting here or I'm standing here walking in the town square of Buenos Aires, as, as you've told me, and I come upon the sign saying, I'm probably in the wrong business, probably working for the wrong company. If a town square in Buenos Aires can put a Facebook page URL onto their permanent sign, there's probably some trend that I'm missing. And here I am in a country where I know exactly four people. I have no idea what's, what's happening outside of Argentina at the time. I was spending more and more of my time in Latin America saying, I don't know what this Facebook thing is all about. I've heard of it for people to get on Facebook, but not really for, for businesses. Don't really understand what's going on, but there seems to be this trend, and I definitely want to be a part of that. And give it a couple of months, and I joined Facebook. Let's talk about what Facebook is, is doing and what our mission is, not just in Singapore, not just in Asia Pacific, but globally. As a company, our mission is to make the world more open and connected. Don't know if you guys have, have heard that before, but our CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, we call him Zuck at work. That's what Zuck says all the time. And what he means when he says that is, we really want Facebook to be a force for good in this world. And the way that we go about doing that is by getting every person in the world onto Facebook to use it. But my version of, of what Zuck says is that we're also very interested in getting every small business in Singapore, in Asia, and also in the world onto Facebook. Think about your experience as, as a Facebook user. I think what makes it interesting is that you're able to add your friends in real life, you're able to talk with them, 
and you're able to search for the brands and companies that offer products and services that you care about. As a business, why is Facebook interesting? It's interesting because there's a lot of people that you would want to target with what you sell already using it on a day-to-day -day basis for hours at a time. So it's actually very complimentary then for businesses and users to both be using Facebook at the same time. Let's go back 100 years. And let's imagine that we are all selling shoes in Singapore. A hundred years ago, if you had just opened up a store, let's say at the local corner, how would, how would you have gotten new customers to the store? So most likely, maybe you would have talked to everybody that you knew, talked to your family, talked to your friends, and said, hey, I'm opening up this shoe store. Why don't you guys come and visit? And those would be your first batch of customers. And they would come to your store, not necessarily because they were interested in your shoes, but they would come to their store, your store, because they knew you, and they trusted you, and maybe they needed shoes, maybe they didn't, maybe they would just swing by to say hello. But past that, how would you get your customers after that? It's very likely that those friends and family that you initially invited into your store, one or a few of them would have a pretty good experience, and then what would happen after that? They would tell all, all of their friends and say, hey, I've got, I know Andy, and he just set up this store selling shoes on the corner. And word of mouth would travel, and that's how you would get more and more customers. What I've just described to you is exactly how Facebook works. A hundred years ago, as a small business, the way that you would have gotten more customers to your store is by telling everybody you know about your store, by inviting your friends and family. Today, as a small business on, on Facebook, as I know a lot of you guys are, James asked the question earlier, that's how we use Facebook. The difference between Facebook and the shoemaker that I just described 100 years ago is the scale in which that happens. So 100 years ago, I was, as a shoemaker, I'm limited by the people that I can physically come into contact with to tell them about my store. But in Facebook today, you've got access to all of your friends at once. And in many cases, you've got access to the friends of your, the friends of your friends as well. So you're able to reach lots of people at once. And we're basically taking this phenomenon called word of mouth marketing that's existed for as long as mankind has. Mankind has always looked to their friends or family for recommendations on, on what to buy, and now we're doing that just at a bigger scale. So what does that mean for small businesses? You might have heard terms thrown out, such as Facebook has a billion users globally now. But as a small business here in Singapore, is that something that you really care about? Maybe, maybe not. But I think what's interesting about the one billion number is that because Facebook has such a large reach globally, that also means that if we are still all shoemakers in Singapore, there are exactly 39,000 people living in Singapore who have listed shoes as one of their interests. So if you were the shoemaker, it's because of those billion users that are on Facebook every month that then you have this captive audience in Singapore or wherever else you sell your goods and services that are interested in what you have to sell. This is really all about how Facebook works. It's about connecting your company with your friends on Facebook. Sometimes the lines will blur because as a small business and as the owner of that business or a worker there, I think the two, will, the two will collide. People know you because of the business that you run. And your business is not some faceless corporation, but it's you. People come to the business because of you. People want to buy shoes because of the person selling the shoes. And one recent study said that 32% of small businesses now look to word of mouth as being, word of mouth through social marketing as being the one way and the best way in which they acquire new customers. So I've talked to you a little bit about my story. Let me share a story of a woman. Her name is Michelle Glitman. She's originally from Australia, and about three years ago, she decided that she wanted to start an online fashion business, but she first started it in her own home. 
So what she did was she went to the local flea market, she set up a stall, and she started to sell her vintage clothing. So that first day that she was at the flea market in Australia, she sold out. And she continued to roam around Sydney as well as Melbourne and other cities in Australia looking for clothing that she could then sell at the flea market. So really, really interesting story of somebody who started her business from scratch based out of her home. And let's watch a video together as Michelle talks about her business called Mishka. When I started Mishka, I always wanted it to be a community. Facebook provides that. Mishka is an online fashion retailer. It's a home-based business. We're all on Facebook. We're all having conversations with each other. There was so much going on, and I thought to start a fan page. I prepared a really small collection of about 20 pieces. It was really, really daunting. No one was there. Launched the page and started to invite friends. Within about a week or two, sold out of that collection. It felt like an overnight kind of, oh wow, I'm onto something. If I share content, I want to know what everybody thinks about it. That's how the business kind of grew and grew so fast, is that I was listening to what people had to say. And that's the beauty of Facebook, you know, that there's that immediate conversation with relevant people. Facebook advertising is a major part of our marketing mix. You can set up an ad, follow the steps. You can target your ads. It's a way for us to communicate with people who don't know about Mishka. And you'll know what works from the results that you get. We had a thousand unique buyers in the first six months with around 40% repeat purchases. 60 new customers purchasing each week and sales have increased by 300% in our second year. And all of that, 100% of our revenue is exclusively driven from Facebook. Currently, we've got 105,000 Facebook fans, which is incredible. And that in turn means that we can reach 14 million people. Every success that I've had in my business has been because of Facebook. My friends two years ago were like, I can't believe people want to buy stuff off Facebook. Like, why, why on earth would they do that? And, you know, now it's, it's a given. All right. I love this story. I love the story because it's the story of an entrepreneur like many of us who had the courage to start her own business from her home and started on, on Facebook, which in many ways, when she first started, was still an unproven platform. There's still things that we're doing every day to make the product better and better, but when I hear stories like Michelle's and, and Mishka's, I'm always just blown away at the courage that uh, some of our customers have. Her name is Michelle, but her nickname is Mishka, and she named the company after herself. And getting back to what I said earlier, that's really what a lot of SMBs and small businesses are about. The person and the business are inseparable because the business is what you do. And just really love uh, hearing about examples like that. If you look at what I'm here talking about now, we recommend there's four ways for businesses to get on Facebook. And coincidentally, if you listen to what Michelle was saying in the video, she did these four things in order to get onto Facebook and ensure that her business saw success on our platform. So I'll spend a little bit of time with, with each of these. First step is just building your Facebook page. So if you guys remember one of the first pictures that I showed you, my daughter Naomi was at the top. She was in my cover photo. That was on my timeline and it represented me as a person. Your Facebook page, in contrast, is similar except it represents your business. So in the same way, this business, this page, represents what your business is about. And as you create the page and you post really interesting content onto this page, that's when it starts to show in the news feed of all of the fans that you have. So I think there's a popular misconception out there that when you post something onto your Facebook page, your fans have to actually go to your page in order to see that content. But we've seen that that's really not the case. Most of your fans are actually absorbing 
and taking in that content that you're posting to your page right through their newsfeed. And newsfeed makes up a big chunk of the time that people spend on Facebook as a whole. People spend 40% of their time on Facebook in the newsfeed. So most powerful thing that you can do first is just to create a page. This is going to be your place on the social graph where people that are currently on Facebook can find your business. So this is where you start. In terms of some of the specifics and the details, you want to set up your cover picture, you want to set up a profile picture, you want to make sure to give your business a name that's representative of your company name, you want to make sure that you put it into the right category so people looking for your business on Facebook will be able to find you. You want to write a post, and when I say a post, that really just means you communicating, you as a business communicating with people that may not know about your business or people that have liked your, your page in the past, so potential and existing customers. And then the fourth one, too, is getting existing customers to like your page. If you go back to the example from before of the shoemaker in Singapore, what's the first thing that you would do to get more customers to your store? You probably would just tell all of your friends and family to come to your store. Now, this is the online version of that. So let's say that you have a physical store, and now you've created an online store represented by a Facebook page, what's the first way and what's the best way that you can get people to like your page on Facebook? Best way to do it is just by inviting people who are your existing customers. So we see that businesses will put in-store collateral, inviting people to like their Facebook page. They'll put, they'll put their Facebook page URL on their receipts, on their emails, and give people special discounts who come into their store to become their Facebook fans. So these are really the four steps to get started. Step two is really to build your audience on Facebook using ads. And ads are the paid way for businesses to build a community on Facebook. So here's an example of an ad on the left side. What's different from this ad versus one that you might see on TV or hear on the radio or read in a newspaper? is that it has social context. So I know this conference is one in which we promise not to use jargon, so let me explain what social context means. All social context means is that one of your friends is on this ad. This ad is shown to you and it says, one of your friends, in this case Sarah, has liked your ad. What we've, what we've seen is that when a user on Facebook sees an ad like this that has social context, all of a sudden, their ability to recall this ad and the brand that they saw in it goes up by 2x. And their purchase intent for whatever is sold in this ad, it goes up by 4x. It goes back to what we were saying before. As humans, and this behavior goes back thousands of years, how do we decide and what filters do we use to decide what things do we buy? And oftentimes it goes back to who do we trust? Do we trust the television? Do we trust the radio? Do we trust the newspaper? Or do we trust our family? Do we trust our parents? Do we trust our siblings? Do we trust friends? And that's where ads such as this, with social context, are much more effective than ads that you might see without the context. Getting down to some of the details of how Facebook targeting works, this is, on the left side, you'll see a screen that, if you are interested in creating an advertising campaign on Facebook, this is what you see. It looks a little bit complicated, but uh, it's actually not. You have a business, and let's say that you've created a Facebook page. You're interested in selling something. So let's bring it back to the shoemaker example in Singapore. I would target Singapore. I would also target people in Singapore who are interested in shoes. I looked the numbers up this morning, and it said 30, 39,000 people in Singapore are interested in shoes. I think that some of you may be in the crowd, depending on what types of shoes are being sold. And then you can also target by status as well. Let's say you are a wedding photographer in Singapore. Did you know that you can then target the tens of thousands of people in Singapore on Facebook that are currently engaged, right? As a wedding photographer, what types of people would you want to target? Would you want to target people that are already married and have kids? Probably not. That would just be blasting one message out to a lot of people. You'd probably want to 
be targeting people that had recently, be, recently become engaged and were looking for a wedding photographer. And that's the level of detail that we're able to target with on Facebook. And I think this level of targeting is really effective, not just for the large businesses like a Coca-Cola or a P&G, but especially for small businesses as well because we've got limited time and we've got limited budget. So precise targeting is actually really, really important. Being successful on, on Facebook, and Michelle Glitman from Mishka knows all about this, you have to test, 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 and iterate. You have to target your what you think is going to be your customer group. Let's say that, again, you are selling shoes, and you think your target demographic is women, but you're actually not sure what age of women will buy your, buy your shoes, what we recommend doing is creating various advertising campaigns, targeting females in this case of different age ranges, and then running different creatives with each of these campaigns. And through this, you'll quickly be able to see which women from which age group liking which interests are the ones clicking on your advertisements, becoming fans of your page, and then coming into your store to purchase. Up front, I think you can have a hypothesis on what's happening, but we really recommend testing because going back to the mindset for small businesses, we've got limited budgets. So to start with, we may not be comfortable spending hundreds of dollars a day, but we should be comfortable spending $5 a day, $10 a day to test different advertising creatives test different target markets. And if we see one, let's say, women who like shoes on Facebook between the ages of 24 and 28, if we see that that target demographic is working really well and that the money we're spending that, the money that we're spending there is resulting in customers coming into our store and buying our shoes, then that's a good ROI and we should be willing to invest more. So I think that's the best practice that I can give to you today of how to be successful on our platform. Test different things. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to start with small budgets. Get to know how Facebook advertising works. And when you find the right group to, to target, then, then you can start to dial up your budgets from there. On the back end, you're running advertising, but we also give free tools such as these located within your ads manager to see how your advertising campaign is working. So. How well are your ads bring people to your site, bring new fans to your business, and potentially even bring people through to your store in the, in the way of offers that are being redeemed? I'll get into offers a little bit later. So on the back end, we also show where your money has been spent and what effect that that has on, on your business. So definitely would recommend that you guys take a look at these tools as well. I think from my personal experience, not enough small businesses look at these tools. They are spending money up front and then just seeing how many people come into the store and saying, well, I think that was a good use of my money, but they're not entirely sure. So we definitely use tools like this to track exactly where your marketing dollars are going. Step one, we've said, really important that you build out a Facebook page. That's your presence on Facebook. Step two was all about using Facebook advertising to connect more fans onto your site. Step three is all about putting really interesting content out there that your fans and your prospects can relate with. Really nothing more than that. So in terms of putting interesting content out there, it could be photos, it could be videos, it could be exclusive discounts, it could be asking questions as well. So what happens when you, you post photos? What happens when you ask questions? For me, I just take it back to me as a Facebook user. What do you spend most of your time doing on, on your newsfeed? Personally, I spend most of my time looking at pictures that my friends post or questions that they put up there. And I'll, I'll answer if one of them says, what's the best Japanese restaurant that you've ever been to in Singapore? If I've been to one that I recently liked, I'll put it there. It's no different as a business. The way that you get people that you're connected with to interact with you is by posting really interesting things. So if you owned a store, you would want to make sure that it gave good placement to things that you wanted to sell. Same way here, this is your storefront. This is where you tell your potential customers about your business and posting really interesting stuff is very important. And we've also found that 
people who like your page end up spending more than people who are not connected. So probably shouldn't come as a surprise. And what happens is that when you give these exclusive discounts, when you show photos and videos to your potential customers and they become your actual customers, you've engaged them. And this becomes a virtuous cycle where you can continually increase the loyalty that they have towards you and your brand by posting interesting content over and over again. So it's something that we would definitely recommend. Newsfeed is something that we talked about earlier. All Newsfeed means is that when you first log in as into Facebook on your desktop or your mobile or your tablet, that Newsfeed shows what all of your friends are up to at the moment. The reason why we stress this is because 40% of time spent on Facebook, 40% of the 1 billion people on Facebook spend their time in the Newsfeed. So when you are able to create engaging content that your prospects and customers really relate with, and they interact with that content either by liking it or commenting on that, that shows up in the newsfeed of their fans. This is the best way to engage uh, your customers, is that when they're flipping through the newsfeed, when they check, check Facebook first thing in the morning or the last thing at night, they're reading about the updates from all of their friends. They're seeing all of the baby pictures that are being posted, but they're also hearing from the brands, from brands and businesses such as theirs that they care about all together. So newsfeed is something that's definitely very important. And we've actually seen an increase in the numbers of businesses that are advertising through the newsfeed. The number used to be somewhere around 50%, but it's now we see close to 65% of businesses are actually advertising through the newsfeed. And we think this is the single best way for businesses to engage with the customers that they want to reach. Promoted post is something that we, we haven't talked about. It's actually a, a product that we put out there to allow businesses to reach even more of their users, their customers. The time that I would really recommend using this is when you post something to your page, let's say that it gets a really good reception. People are really liking a photo that you posted, or they're really buying into this exclusive discount that you've put online, and they're interacting a lot with your page. When you see this happening, would recommend that you use our promoted post product, and then promote your page post to more and more of your fans and to your friends of fans. It's really taking what is already working and then supercharging it to make sure even more people see that content and are able to act on it. In terms of what people use promoted posts to do, it's really about these three things. But my tip to you outside of building a page and, and connecting with more customers through ads and, and putting quality content out there for your customers to, to consume is taking what is already working from the content that you create and using promoted posts to get even more reach using it. Facebook offers, we've talked a little bit about this. Facebook offers is, is really a product for businesses trying to connect their online advertising with direct sales. And this could be either in-store sales or online sales. This is how it works. You create, let's say that you are a shoemaker, and you have a two-for-one discount that you want to promote to all of your fans, and you write a post on your page that promotes this Facebook offer. At the bottom of that post, when you create the offer, it will say, claim this offer, and this post will start showing up in the newsfeed of your customers and their fans. The great thing about Facebook offers is that when one of your fans claims that offer, that claiming will show up in the news feeds of all of their friends as well. So it really starts to create a viral effect. When somebody claims an offer that they see on Facebook, they'll get an email with a unique code or a barcode that they can then bring into the store and say, I saw your ad on Facebook and I want to redeem this offer or they'll get a unique barcode that they can use online when checking out. This is great for small businesses because all of a sudden you know how much you spent on Facebook advertising, how much you spent to create this offer, and you also know how many customers walk through your door holding that piece of paper saying, I saw your offer on Facebook and I'm here to redeem it. And it's really easy for you to calculate the ROI. Fourth step, influencing the friends of your fans. This is something that we've talked about a little bit before already. Really important 
that your ads have social context. We call these sponsored stories. And we've all already talked about why these ads are much more effective than normal ads. Double the lift in brand awareness and four times the increase in purchase intent when you have ads that show, that show social context such as this. In terms of how this works, let's say that your page has 5,000 fans. This is gonna be your core group of brain advocates. They're the ones connected with your page and the ones that have liked your page because they're really interested in what you have to share and all of the updates that you have. Let's say you're coming out with a new product. These are your brand advocates because when you post new content onto your Facebook page, these 5,000 people are the ones that are interacting with your page. And then they, on average, have 130 friends. So when they're interacting with your page and your products, this creates an even bigger ecosystem where you as a business have access to all of their friends and all of a sudden you're able to reach hundreds of thousands of people. So influencing the friends of your fans is really, really important. I'm gonna end today soon, but before I do, let me tell you two stories. We, t we talked a little bit about Mishka earlier and how Michelle Glitman was able to build a home-based business based entirely on Facebook. It's a pretty amazing story. Let me tell you another story that I like. Griffins is a cookie manufacturer based uh, in Australia and New Zealand, in New Zealand, and they've been around for 150 years. Has anybody here heard of Griffins before? All right, so they, so they sell these cookies and these biscuits, and they've attracted quite a following. What happened was, recently they decided to cut down on the numbers of cookies of, that they made for whatever reason, and they announced to their customers, this Chocoade cookie we thought we've been pr producing for a while, we're not gonna produce it anymore. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, one of their fans on Facebook really didn't want to see the cookies going away. So they came up with a way to keep them. So let's watch this video together. My name's Amber Johnson. I'm from Upper Hutt, New Zealand, and we're here at the Griffin's Biscuit Factory. I wanted Griffins to bring back chocoades. They're a thing from our childhood. We had them at Nana's when we went to visit, so they were always a bit special. So I started the Facebook page to try and show Griffins how many people remembered chocoades and wanted them back. I knew that my friends and my family would share it and it would grow. We got 500 people on the page. A lot of conversations going on, people telling their stories, sparking other memories and yeah, striking a chord. We noticed that there had been a Facebook page set up called Get Griffins to Bring Back Chocolates. We then actually used our Griffins NZ Facebook page to put a voting app. The paid activity is really key because not only are we wanting to communicate with the fans on the Griffins NZ Facebook page, but we're also looking to communicate with people who aren't current fans. We watched and we saw the numbers grow and we were overwhelmed by the fact that there was over 15,000 people voted to bring it back. Since New Zealand began, there have been those destined to forge this country's path. People like Upper Hutt resident Amber Johnson who recently asked, Dear Griffins, What ever happened to those orangey, chalky, chocoade bickies from the 80s? These 11 words mobilised an army of like-minded Kiwis to shout, Griffins to say, yeah, let's bring back Chocoade. We were just completely overwhelmed with over 27,500 likes just for that post. And uh, we've since found out that that was actually a record breaker in New Zealand. Griffins got in touch with me, asked me if I wanted to come to Auckland and got to see them being made. Oh, that was insane. There were thousands of them. <laughs> thousands on this big conveyor belt. Marketers are working off smaller budgets. You need to make sure that every dollar works effectively for you. I'm really confident the investment that we've made in Facebook has had an outstanding return for us in terms of return on investment. We had a PR reach of over 2.2 million people, which is over half of the population of New Zealand. Over a million dollars of revenue in the first week. Three months later, Chocoade is still the number one selling biscuit in New Zealand. I thought if we had enough people, Griffins might quietly put them back on the shelf. I didn't think it would be huge. <laughs> Amber had a desire. She got others in behind her, which is really what Facebook's about. It was sort of proving to me that any one person can start something and change something.
It's insane. <laughs> it's not what I expected. All right. So really love that story because it shows the, the power of, of one person who said, Amber Johnson, this is my favorite cookie. I'm not going to let it go away. It also gives a good example of what happens when businesses really listen to the feedback that they're getting from customers and are brave enough to act on that. And I think it's just a, a good example of how Facebook brings both brands and, and people together. So I said I had two stories to share. Griffin's was one, and this is the last one. Let me end with the story that I started with. Back in the town square of Argentina, this is what convinced me to join Facebook and really convinced me that I was missing the trend and I had to become a part of this. Not just in the US, but this is really what got me to move to Singapore a year ago and this is why I'm here now trying to help businesses get onto Facebook. The reason I'm here today also just to, to let all of you know, we're investing in small businesses. We care about small businesses and we want to see them do really well on Facebook. We want to see more and more examples like Mishka, like Griffins. The one thing about this page is that I recently went to it after three years and I saw that they had a couple hundred fans. So would love here to stand here in front of you and say, you know what, this town square turned out to be the biggest thing ever and now it's got millions of people following it and well sadly that's not the case. And to me it's just a reminder of how much work that we as Facebook have, have left to do really. Another one of our company mottos is 1% done, or this journey is 1% done. And what that means is that although we've convinced a lot of people to, to use Facebook over the years, our mission is far from fulfilled. We still have so much work to do. And as long as there's businesses like this town square in Argentina that are either using Facebook and not having the best experience, or businesses that have yet to even hear about Facebook, that's what we're here to do. That's what our team here is, is doing. That's why I'm based here in Singapore. So with those stories, I wanted to say thank you for hosting me today at your seminar. Really happy to, to be here, and thanks again. All right, thank you, Andy.